Let's talk about the difference between the regular power rule versus the reverse power rule. For the regular power rule, this right here, it's like everybody's favorite calculus formula. Because it is. Anyways, he says that to find the derivative of the function in the form of x to the n power, we know the answer is going to be n times x to the n minus 1. How do we get this? We look at x to the n power. What we do first is that we take the power, we bring that to the front. That's the first step, and that's how we get n. And let me write this down. This right here is step 1. Okay? And then secondly, what we do is we have to subtract 1 to the exponent, and that's how we get the n minus 1. So we minus 1 right here to the exponent, and this is step 2. And what we are saying is that if you want to find the derivative of x to the n power, all you need to do is step 1 and step 2, and you will get your answer. Anyways, for the reverse power rule, this is a situation when we want to find an antiderivative for the function that's in the form of x to the n power. For the reverse power rule, we are not only going to reverse the steps from the regular power rule, but we also have to reverse the operations. Remember, step 1 was we bring the n to the front, and step 2 was we take away 1 from the exponent. For the reverse power rule, we are going to look at the exponent first. Instead of minus 1, we are going to add 1 to it. So, we are going to look at n and then add 1 to it. This right here, it's the first step when you are trying to do the reverse power rule for the antiderivative. So the next step is, we are going to look at the new exponent and then divide this by the new exponent, which is m plus 1. And this right here is step 2. So what we are saying is, an antiderivative for the function that's in the form of x to the n power is going to be x to the n plus 1 over n plus 1. And this is it. However, there's a small technical thing we have to be careful. Because we have a fraction, and we have a n plus 1 on the denominator. Let me make a note right here. This formula is only good for when n is not equal to negative 1. Otherwise, if n is equal to negative 1, we are going to end up with a 0 on the denominator. And that's not good, right? But what happens if n is indeed equal to negative 1? How are we going to find an antiderivative for the function that's x to the negative 1? And by the way, this right here is the same as saying 1 over x. So to do this, to find an antiderivative for 1 over x, you have to ask yourself, derivative of what will give you 1 over x? And you have to know your derivative table really well. The answer for that is ln x, right? Derivative of ln x will give you 1 over x. Here's another technical detail that we have to be careful, because when we're trying to say, an antiderivative for 1 over x is ln x. We have to make sure that the x on both sides agree. For example, right here, I can plug in any negative value for x. I can plug in x is equal to negative 2, for example. We can totally do 1 over negative 2. But we are not allowed to have ln of negative 2, right? This is undefined. So what we do is this. An antiderivative for 1 over x, it's not only ln x. Because we have to avoid this situation to happen, we are going to attach an absolute value around the x. This way, when x is equal to negative values, we are okay because we are going to end up with ln, but the absolute value will make the negative values positive. So this is going to be okay. This is just ln2. And this right here completes the situations when you are trying to do the reverse power rule when n is not negative 1 and when n is equal to negative 1. So this is it.